Hello, everybody. Welcome to Behind the Mic. I'm Gary Laubach. Good to see the mic back with us. Mike Joseph back with us today as we look forward to Saturday's ball game against Bucknell. That's a 3.30 start at Bucknell, and you can watch that ball game on ESPN+. Mike will give you some idea of how we can beat Bucknell if you go inside the huddle with him uh, this week. Mike, Patriot League. Let's forget a little bit about what's happened up to this point. Mm -hmm. Patriot League, these two teams with their Patriot League opener. It's at Bucknell. We beat Bucknell in the fall. Um, it's a game that we must win. Uh, but certainly I think your, your point basically is let's just continue to get better yeah particularly offensively. Yeah, I think that really doesn't matter who's on the other side. The only difference here is the Patriot League game. you got to have this game. You, you shut this team out last year. Mm -hmm. You played terrific. You got to the quarterback. You caused a lot of problems. They didn't throw for a lot of yardage. They didn't run for a lot of yardage. The defense is going to be stout if they stay healthy, and that's the question when they're on the field for so long like they were last week. But I really feel like uh, it really doesn't matter who Lafayette plays. They need to get better offensively. They need to get better in the kicking game. There's certain parts of this game that are really struggling for this team, and it's putting the defense in hard position so the kicking game number one then obviously find a way to consistently move the football and it starts on the ground when you look at the numbers it's a game that could go extra innings a zero zero because neither one of the offenses of yeah. these two teams Bucknell averaging just nine points a game uh, they're giving up 26 Lafayette of course not all that much better offensively uh, so it seems like we had an opportunity against Penn twice we had a punt return for a touchdown called back we had a pick six that we did not catch and go in for the touchdown we did not score any offensive points against Penn nor were we actually close to doing so no we weren't and even when we did get down there uh in the first quarter we elected not to kick a field goal which would have cut the lead from six to you know six zero to six to three mm -hmm. so that again that what does that tell you about the kicking game it's a little bit of a struggle but they got to find a way to stay on the field their third down percentage is last in the league they're last in the league in scoring they're last Last in the league in first downs. They're last in the league in punting. I mean, you've got to find a way to flip this script mm -hmm. and find a way to do that as offensively as now. Are you going to have a new quarterback? Or are you going to be able to get the ball to Julius Young? I'm going to talk about it on Inside the Huddle. The kid is too good not to get 15 targets a game. He's got to touch the football. Cannot only do it from the split end position into the boundary. Got to do it maybe from the slot. It's a lot of ways to get him the ball. And then obviously you have the counterparts with Stewart. You have, I thought, Mason Gilbert had a couple Stewart. nice catches mm -hmm. as well. And then you look outside with Karasia, who had his best game as a leopard. So it's got to be done. It's got to find a ways to get stay on schedule. When they're not on schedule, they might as well punt the football. Which brings us to the next problem the Leopards have. If you watch the ball game against Penn, you saw Ryan Schuster go down. It appears as if Ryan has a serious injury. Uh, he definitely will not play this particular Saturday, and who knows how long he'll be out. The surprise, of course, I guess, was that you bring in uh, uh, Rent Monty, yeah. uh, not a Sean Davis. Not quite sure why. Uh, I'm sure it's something that will be talked about in the luncheon. Yeah. But uh, – we got to go with somebody different. I thought Rent at least handled himself pretty well. Got rid of the ball uh, rather quickly, which was a good sign. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he has the ability to do that. I think he's a little bit more – uh, has a little more scramble ability, ability to extend plays and get out. Maybe that's why they went to Ren. I thought he did a pretty good job. He moved them down the field at the end, um, had the interception. But, you know, he he's a guy that I, I think may have picked up the offense a little bit better. Remember, this is two different offenses, mm -hmm. two different years for all of these guys. So Ren has the, maybe had the ability to do that as well. Um, they may have felt more comfortable bringing him in. I'm Again, it doesn't matter to me who's playing. Just do what's on the card, okay? Whatever coach calls, get it done. Execution is the name of the game. And it all starts up front. I thought the offensive line played a little bit better. And, again, you can see how they're getting better. The question is, do they have the strength to hold up on third down and nine, third down and ten, the drop back three, four mm -hmm. second, get rid of the football. You can get the ball out quick, but this offensive line's got to do something. It starts, I think, with that running game. And when you miss a guy like Jaden Sutton, Running the football back there, he hasn't played in two weeks. If you can get him back, maybe get a little bit of push, pick up those third downs. And we've got five freshmen starting on offense. That yeah. certainly does not help the case. We 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 had five sacks again on Saturday. I think yeah. we're up to 16 sacks on the season. So you've got to find a way to protect the quarterback. But one would think, all right, now the competition is a little bit more even, yes. that maybe this is the week that we can play good football. Of course, Dave Sakini, a former Lehigh guy, he wants to beat Lafayette badly. They 
want to get their first Patriot League win. They're coming off a 41 to nothing loss to FBS Central Michigan. Uh, so both the te- these teams in the same spot, same position, both desperate for a win. Yeah, they're both des- desperate to, uh, to execute and play well in all three phases. And I think that's what it's going to be about for Lafayette. I think Lafayette has the edge here because their defense is so good. Mm-hmm. Think about what they did. I mean, they held what I thought was a sub-level Penn team. It wasn't a great Penn team, but still had some athletes on the outside that could make plays. Still had the ability to run the football with, with uh, um, the, uh, Trey Flood, the guy that had mm-hmm. really did a nice job. So, But this defense is really good. So can we cause those turnovers? Can we get a few interceptions? Create some short fields and then take advantage. Any opportunity you have to get points on the board, I don't care if it's a field goal or it's a touchdown or whatever, any chance you have to get on the board, You've got to take advantage of that, and I think it's all set up by this fantastic defense that we have. And as you look at Penn, we have, I mean, as you look at Bucknell, we haven't talked about their offense, yeah. but that's in a little bit of flux, too. They had two quarterbacks play on Saturday. Not quite sure if one came in because of the score or one came in because they wanted to get a look at Ty- Tyler Beverett, but he didn't do badly, 6 for 12, 57 yards. Ethan Grady has been their starter, 6'2". He's a sophomore. He's young. He's only completing 44% of his passes. Yeah, and again, they're in the same boat, I think. Mm-hmm. Obviously, they're struggling to find out who what their identity is. Lafayette needs to find their identity offensively. The guy that really sparks my attention uh, on their offense, too, is Christian Spagnardi, the tight end. Mm -hmm. Big kid, two nice touchdowns against Towson. He's a big kid. He's a local kid right down the road here. Um, And uh, you've got to keep an eye on him because Bucknell will threaten you down the middle of the field. And, you know, for Lafayette's both safeties have played well this year coming up against a run. But you saw the big play against Penn was that vertical route down the middle Mm -hmm. of the field, Mm -hmm. uh, set them up for that first touchdown. Really, the only touchdown I think they actually drove the football but, you know, our safeties are, are – we can get to the quarterback with four. we got to play some coverage back there, and Christian Subugnardi could be a, a major factor for them in the middle of the field. And they have played well. You should understand they lost yeah. 1,000 in overtime, 14-13, to 13, and VMI 24-14. to 14. So it's not like they can't play good football. I think they were just simply out-talented in, uh, last week against Central Michigan. Uh, again, as you look at their defense – it's okay. Uh, they give up a 208 yards a game. They've given up 26 points a game, 413 yards of total offense. Yeah. It looks like uh, if you're going to get going offensively, this might be the week. Yeah, it is. And, and, and they're always giving you – this defense will give you things. They'll give you the flats. Okay, they'll give you the middle of the field. You've got to take advantage of those type of things. But this, remember, this game's at home for them. Mm-hmm. This is at Bucknell. I played there many times. It's a very difficult place to go. It's a big open air type of stadium. They're going to be pumped up. You know, they're going to be wearing that orange. It's getting towards you know, Halloween, and they love that stuff. I'm telling you, Bucknell is a tough place to go down. You've got to take advantage of this game right away. First quarter, I'm telling you, whoever has the first quarter lead is going to win this football mm-hmm. game. You've got to take advantage of it right away, and I think Lafayette's got to jump out on top of them, whether they do it defensively or offense, come back to Easton with a W. There are the keys to the game as uh, Bucknell has won four of the last six against the Leopards. Let's hope it's four of the last seven after Saturday's game is completed. Once again, you can watch it on ESPN+. Plus. It starts at 3.30. Mike and I will be back in the booth the following week against Princeton, and then we'll roll through the Patriot League. Let's go 1-0 and in the Patriot League, and then we'll worry about Princeton, but look at the rest of the league as we move on. For Mike, I'm Gary. Thanks for joining us on Behind the Mic.